1991, interviewing Mrs. Faye Johnson, a longtime resident of Newton. You got it. Now, shall we go up? How long have you lived in Newton? Well, I've lived here since I was five weeks old. Um, you were born in which village? I was, well, I wasn't born here, yeah. but I was born in Missouri, and then my mother died when I was five weeks old, so I came back here, and with, I grew up with my grandmother. She brought me up, and at, at that time, she lived in West Newton on Wiswell Street. Now, my grandfather, who is William Tappan Rice, ran a grocery store in West Newton, now where the uh, CVS is, that building, okay, on Watertown Street, on the corner of Watertown Street and, uh, what is it, Waltham Street. Okay, that's and he had a brother who lived in um, Newton Center who also ran a grocery store, and they were known as the Rice Brothers. His name, as I say, was Rice. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how long he owned it, but I know he lived here, according to the records I have, he lived in Newton for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Now, his family grew up in, they lived, as I say, on Wiswell Street. Mm -hmm. And um, prior to that, my, um, his wife, my grandmother, had lived here since she was a little girl, so it was way back. Her father who was Lucius Clark Tolman, oh. yeah, lived on Washington Street where the armory is today. They owned all that land, mm -hmm. according to the records at the Jackson Homestead, because I looked it up and it had the same address. And that was, um, he was born in 1822 and he died in 1885. I don't know when he came to Newton. He came from Worcester area. You know, so that was your great... That's my great-grandfather. Great-grandfather. Great right. right. And I'm no kid. <laughs> <laughs> but um, then when he died, he died in an accident on the uh, railroad. He worked for the Boston Albany Railroad at that time. And, of course, they had several lines through here. Was it nearby? Yeah, right. Was well, they were on the street at that time. That was before they lowered the tracks. Right, right. And, but as I say, he died in 1885, so when he died... Evidently, his widow, who, who was his second wife, Charlotte Tolman, sold that property. I don't know who she sold it to. I wish I still had it. <laughs> and she moved and bought a house on Wiswell Street. And that's where my grandmother and my grandfather lived and uh, uh, raised their family of three girls. Mm -hmm. And as I say, my grandfather uh, you know, ran this grocery store there right in West Newton Square. Do you have an idea of when he started that? No, I don't, but I'm assuming that if he lived here in Newton for 40 years, I'm assuming that he started the business probably around, you know, 40 yes. years prior to his death. Yes, I don't right. know. I don't I don't know of any and other reason why he'd be probably here. Probably always had that name, Rice. Yeah. yeah. His name was William Tappan Rice. Right. And his brother's name, who had a store in uh, Newton, Newton Center. Center, was George Rice. Now, and I don't... And might they have started at the same time, or was one an adjunct of the other? Well, one lived in West Newton, and one lived in, in Newton Center, and uh, so I, they... How many they miles were apart is that? About two, three at least? From West Newton to Newton Center? Three miles, I would yeah, guess, good, as good. a crow flies. So I'm they're not, not competing with each other. Oh, no, no. And then, finally, when my grandfather died... Um, his brother George uh, le what, what year was that? Discontinued. My grandfather died uh, in 1919, December 18, 1919. Mm -hmm. And um, so then at that point, my grandmother that I was living with at that time sold the house on Wiswell Street and we moved to Newtonville. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was raised in Newtonville. Mm -hmm. In fact, my grandmother, my mother, Myself and my two children all graduated from Newton High School. What's now Newton North? Right. That's the only high school at the time. I right? think when my grandmother went to Newton High School, it was a it was a small wooden building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what class would she likely to have? Been? Oh, good Lord! I don't know. I'd have to but look. Let's work I'd back have to look you. it what up. What class were you? 
1935. 1935. Right. Yeah. And your mother probably would have been uh, 25 or 30 years before that. I would guess so. Yeah, I'd have to. I have all the records at home. I didn't know yeah. what you wanted. That's fine. That's fine. No, just an approximation. I'd like to get a feeling for yeah. you know what your educational experience is. Boy, that's smack dab in the middle of the uh, depression, isn't it? Oh yes. Oh yes. We didn't have <laughs> two rocks to push together. <laughs> but still, you made it through. Oh yes. Nice yeah. Time. We didn't know we were poor. No. We just didn't have any money. It's funny, I hear this in interviews over the years, you know, oh, well, we didn't have it too badly in Lower Falls, but we heard things were bad elsewhere. Yeah. Right. But it, it, it's, it's, it, it's interesting to get your perspective. What did the class of 35 do upon graduation? That's a good, well, I went to art school for three years. I had a scholarship to art school in Boston. And uh, what the rest of the class did, I don't know, but I've been to every reunion there is, yeah. and they seem to have thrived, so apparently uh, they made it, right, you know. Right. You know. Uh, getting back to your grandmother, now, did she still have uh, uh, younger aunts or uncles of yours at home when she you came to be raised by her? Um, yeah, <clears throat> my, see, my two aunts, lived there on Wiswell Street with her before they got married. So I was I was just a baby when she brought me home and actually she brought my sister along with her who was older. And uh, so everybody sort of took care of me, I guess. <laughs> it's a baby. Now, was she mostly at home or did she have outside work or did she help in the grocery? No, I don't think so. Yeah. No. How about the, uh, uh, your uh, um, aunts and uncles, did they help as youngsters? No. They didn't help them in the store. Mm -hmm. They had their own. My, one of my aunts went to art school and did a lot of artwork. And uh, her sister, um, I'm not sure just when. I'd have to look it up when she was married. My mm -hmm. sister and my aunt Helen. Um, she probably got married when they when I was still a baby and then living up there on Wiswell Street. Mm -hmm. Well, did I, your grandfather have hired help in the store? I have no idea. See, I was, what? Very young. Very young yeah. when he died. I was yeah. three. Or nine. And what happened to the store after? I don't know. Um, it's been sold over and over and over. You know, Location. it used to be Barron's uh, department store there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when I moved back up to West Newton, after I got married, um, uh, I moved back up to on Watertown Street in West Newton. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the, the store at that time was Barron's. And then, of course, they went out of business, and CVS moved in there, and, you know, the whole... It's still the old block. Yeah. It's but, all, but uh, you changed, know, fancied yeah. up, but it's still the old block it's, there. It's interesting, yeah, because I know <coughs> I've just been past there, even though I'm not a Newton resident. So I do notice these places that seem to be continual business areas, no yeah. matter how fancy right. they become, right. because of location. Yeah. Now, the Newton Center Rice brother, how did he fare? I'm, well, uh, he finally, I think, I think probably, I have to kind of guess at something. I think when my grandfather died, Rice Brothers no longer existed. Mm -hmm. And so he went to work for what was the, called the economy stores at that time. Ah. Old, real old stores, <laughs> grocery stores, right. but he worked for them mm -hmm. rather than running his own business. Mm -hmm. And so I honestly don't know too much about his end of, this, no. of the so story. So your, your great uncle lived until when? He died, I believe, in the 30s, mm -hmm. but I'm not too sure because I don't have any records mm -hmm. on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and your grandmother managed quite well after your grandfather died in that Yeah, she sold the big house, which, you know, was a big single house, and she'd raised three girls there and two grandchildren. And uh, so she sold that property, and we moved to, as I say, to Newtonville, bought a two-family house mm -hmm. so that we lived in part of it, and she rented the other part. Right, right. And uh, so we managed to scrape by. <laughs> Interesting. And then when she died, I inherited the house. And uh, then I got married, and uh, we finally sold that house and moved up to Watertown Street.
Mm-hmm. So you've yeah. all you've been uh, well. You went to school in Boston, of course. You commuted, right? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. That's when the trains ran frequently. Oh yes, <coughs> everybody has told me, especially about that period. <laughs> Every ten minutes. How easy it was to commute back and forth. No and problem. I can just see the spirit of growth of Newton because it was so easy. Yeah. To live in a country Absolutely. Yet, yet get to get yeah. in town. Yeah, what now, did you work after you were married, and did you work in art? Yes. Um, well, I worked for a private family, uh, doing artwork for them, and then finally the war came along, and I went to work for Backrax. Oh, for, the photographer? Yeah, yeah, for a while. And then I left there, and I worked for a photo engraving company in Boston for a while. Which one? Oh, I don't even think it's in business anymore. I, let me see. I, um... I can't even remember the name of it. It wasn't Faye, was it? No, no, no. It was over on Columbus Avenue. Um, See, I'm a South Ender, so I have oh, a black bracket. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Or the name it of was the it close to... Um, it was right next to the Armory yeah, there on the corner. Yeah, right near Arlington Catholic. Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, the ga- it was the gas company at that time, right? Uh, well, it was across the street. It was on, Col- right. it was on Columbus Avenue. And but you commuted all the time. Oh sure, no problem. Back Bay Station, right? Oh absolutely, yeah, right. yeah. I have that it was very. It was very easy to commute to Boston then. I grew up three blocks away from Black Back Bay Station. So oh, did you? How, you know, right, right. So it's it, all these people populating Copper Square and the Back Bay offices. Oh, sure, they all yeah. They didn't uh, live in Boston. It cert- certainly changed a lot, mm-hmm. though. And then, for how long did, into your marriage did you work? Um, well, I got married in um, 46, and then I had a, a, our first youngster was born in 48, so I quit work then, mm-hmm. and um, I s- stayed as a housewife, and then I had my second child in, in 51. Mm-hmm. And that's when we moved to West Newton, bought a single house up there. And what part of West Newton is that? Right on Watertown Street. Watertown yeah. Street, yeah. And now, when you got there in 51, was it uh, that part of West Newton? Was it It's an old section. Quiet? Oh, uh, did, after the war, was there an influx of building in that particular area, or were there no house lots left? I don't, there were just houses all along the street there. I don't think there was any room for anything. Mm-hmm. Um, There's another pass of uh, Newton where the lots were there. Yeah, no, Boy. not around us. Um, the, uh, see, the house that I moved into was probably built around 1927, something like mm-hmm. that. And so, you know, it was an old house at that time. <laughs> It hasn't gotten any younger, I can tell you. <laughs> I'm still living there. That's great. So, yeah. But uh, what was the population mostly young families for? At that time, there were three houses near me there that had young children, my children's age, which was great because we all got together, uh, the mothers, you know, during the day and the kids and that sort of thing. And so it was a very friendly uh, neighborhood type of uh, arrangement. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I say, my children went to Davis School, and then they went to uh, Warren Junior High. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, sorry, I can't keep them straight. Is Davis School still in existence? Well, Davis School is now uh, a, what is it? Sort of a resource center over there on on uh, Wal- on Waltham Street. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have all kinds of things going on over there. Um, RSVP, uh, Retired Senior Volunteer Program, is there, and then they have other uh, uh, programs, outreach programs. Mm-hmm. But as a neighborhood elementary school, it doesn't exist. Anymore. No, no. I don't know where the children go <laughs> in West Newton, well, up to Williams, maybe. Well, shaking around uh, in the last ten years, and I wondered if there was. Yet even before that, a reshaking of all the elementary. No, we. Um, all your children went to that. Yeah, well, I just had two. Yeah. 
uh, both our both our kids went there, uh, and then as I say, they went to Warren, which of course is was bad. Warren within walking distance, or was that already a school bus situation? Oh no, they could walk, and it was good for them. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't that far. I I live probably what uh, half three quarters of a mile, if it's that much, from Warren. You just have to go across the square and up uh, Washington Street to get to Warren. No. When it comes to high school, when they went to high school, was it a uh, three-year high school or a four-year high school? Well, let's see. Junior high was uh, what, seven, eight, and nine. Oh, so that. Yeah, high so was they went three years. years to Newton High. Yeah. Was that a school bus situation? No, they, my kids walked. They disdained, you know, ride. They wouldn't even go with. Uh, I offered to take them down. No, they had to walk. Well, they'd meet their friends along the way. Right. And it was probably, what, a good mile from... It was a social thing to oh, walk Oh, absolutely. Then, just yeah. like the bus is a social They thing. wouldn't have been caught dead in the car. <laughs> well, I, did you find that there were a lot of parent-teacher type organizations that could families and families? Oh, yeah, I about? think so. Uh, especially in, in grammar school, uh, you know, you get uh, pulled into these parent-teacher organizations when your children are in school and uh, both my husband and I kept pretty close track of our children in school mm -hmm. on both junior high and uh, uh, grammar school. Uh, high school was a little more removed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, you just kept hoping your kids graduated. <laughs> right, 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 and perhaps no news was good news as right. far as summoning yeah, from right. school. Yeah. It's funny how over the years, of course, I come from downtown Boston, in which uh, one had to get very, very much involved in the 70s, I must say. And uh, just to make sure uh, your segment of the system was either functioning or moving smoothly. So I've always uh, thought a lot yeah. about these suburban right. school systems. Yeah. Yeah, I was interested. Uh, uh, how about your church affiliations? Well, when I was a, a young a youngster, my grandmother um, uh, was the old Puritan type, <laughs> to put it bluntly, <laughs> and um, we she belonged to the Central Congregational Church, which of course is an old church there on Walnut Street in Newtonville. Newtonville. And uh, then when uh, I grew up and got married uh, and moved to West Newton. I changed over to uh, the second church, which is up on Highland Avenue, which is also at that time a congregational mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. And so we're all Protestant family. Mm -hmm. And uh, my children, sometimes under protest, mm -hmm. went to <laughs> went to you know school there. Right, right. And, and uh, that was a regular slew of Sunday school types. That's uh, right. Now. Yeah. Right. And, and, and would you say it's a thriving congregation still, or? Yes, I would say so. Mm -hmm. um, I still belong. I shame to say I don't always go. Well, but <laughs> all of us did. But it's interesting. But I am still a member of the church. So. How old do you think that congregation is? Gosh, I don't know. I'm I'm not much on studying the you know the history of the church. Mm -hmm. But it's it, been there a long time. It's interesting to me because so many other church buildings have changed hands and new congregations. Yeah, well, I think yeah, I think um, a couple of the congregational churches and other sections have joined with the big church there in West Newton. Oh, so uh, yeah, I'm not, but I, I I'm, do don't quote me on that yeah. one. Okay. And you said now at the congregationalists? Yeah, most congregational churches now belong to a, a group which is called the United Church of Christ. And when do you think that movement came into? Gosh, I have no idea. My, I'm very weak on church history, <laughs> let me but tell it's you. it's fascinating because I've been hearing about other yeah. church histories, so that's why I asked you. Yeah. And uh, do they still, that your your church offer a full slew of uh, uh, Sunday school courses. Oh yes, as yes, well. yeah. yeah. But I'm you sort of out of that yeah. bracket now. Oh well, now you're right. putting your time, and it's probably been strengthened by the addition of other 
uh, parishes that yes, have given I up so. their buildings. Yes, I think so. Yeah, I guess you know when you re reorganize like that, it's it's helpful. To but as I say, uh, you're asking the wrong person when no. it comes to about the history of churches. Now, when your children were in junior high, and I felt that they they were old enough to uh, come home and come into the house uh, by themselves, I uh, uh, wanted. I loved animals and I've always worked with animals, even as a kid. I used to drag home every stray dog that was in the world when I was a kid for one of those deals. But I went to work in Waltham for um, a veterinarian, and uh, just the old Grundy work of cleaning kennels and taking care of the dogs, and I gradually worked up to uh, you know other things mm -hmm. in the hospital mm -hmm. there. And so eventually I worked for three different vets, um, there were two of them in Waltham, and then I, I left there for a while, and I went up and worked in Weston. Really Weston Dog. It, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love working with the animals. And um, then I graduated sort of into uh, uh, grooming and, and uh, clipping and grooming and taking care of it. that end of the business. And um, I, w I worked, I would say, a good 20 years doing that type of work. It must have been satisfying because either you'd like it and absolutely abhor it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love working with animals. And then uh, I guess the only organization I really took great interest in was um, dog training school. I joined that in 1963 to learn to uh, uh, you know train dogs and that sort of thing. And I've been in, I'm still in that organization. Well, um, I, now that they, they're of such use to mankind, you have them helping the blind, you have them uh, hearing Oh, yeah, the right, hearing ear dogs. The, the, the mm -hmm. hearing ear dogs right. are something relatively new. And what is the formal name of this organization? It's the Charles River Dog Training Club, Inc. We used to be in the, you know, very happy relationship with the armory. Mm -hmm. in West Newton, and it's a beautiful place to have our program once a week. Because of space? Oh, yeah. yeah. You need a lot of space because we had large classes, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a lot of fun. And then, of course, um, a couple of years ago, Boston decided to send all the 200 homeless people out to the West Newton Armory. Right. So that. we had to get out much to our, uh, you know, horror, and so we moved over to the Waltham Armory, and they welcomed us with open arms for about six months, and then they closed that armory, and then, of course, everything went to pieces. Yeah. But we got a small place uh, through uh, the Newton Recreation Department over in Newton Center on that playground over there, and uh, so we worked there for, for several months, and then, but we found that we're, our classes were large, and we the place was really not mm -hmm. satisfactory mm -hmm. as far as um, room went. We had to break up our classes, and it just didn't work out. So uh, finally, one of the members of the club who lives in Weston, um, now we now rent a place up at the field school in Weston, mm -hmm. and um, I am more or less out of it at this point. Uh, I, well, I, you know, I've been through several, you know, as president, vice president, treasurer, well, all those routines that you go through. And um, I decided I was getting old enough so I'd let some of the younger people take over I some see. of these jobs. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, were you training dog owners to train their dogs? Yeah, absolutely. Or were you training the dogs themselves? No, we're training the owners. Great. Right. Right, yes, because, sir. my goodness, I mean, you could train a dog fine, but if you train somebody else, you go on to train to train. Yeah. And you're really... Yeah, like, no, it, it was a lot of fun, and I still enjoy it, but I'm getting to a point where all the classes are in the evening, and I'm, I'm getting to a point where I really don't like to do much driving mm -hmm. after dark. Mm -hmm. and I don't mind too much about Newton because the streets are well lighted, and I know where I'm going. Right. But... The um, further out, yeah. Yeah. And so I really, um, maybe when, you know, spring comes along, we have daylight saving, I'll get up there to some of the classes. But um, uh, other than that... <laughs> it's fascinating to me because 
<laughs> How far back have you been able to trace your family? All back to the 1600s. Okay, and were they on the Mary and John, like all the... Yes. The, oh, you, they were. Yep. They were Some of them. Yeah, and what name were they? Well, there was... Um, let me see. <laughs> I've forgotten. There was Tolman. I, I recognize that as an old Dodgers to me. Yeah, think. that's right. And uh, there again, if I had my uh, book with me, I could look it up for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but they all, on all sides of my family, go back to some place in England. Mm -hmm. And they were all, almost all of them here prior to the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. depending on whatever date and what boat they right, got. Right. Um, I guess the Mary and John is 1630. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, my maiden name was Dyer. And oh, Dyer. D Y E R? A R. D Y E R. They changed their spelling. Either they couldn't spell or, or they decided to change the name. Right. And when they came to Boston and settled into somewhere around here. And as I say, if I had my book with me, I could tell you where they went. But um, then there was a John Fay. How, how was that spelled? F A Y. And they settled in Westboro, or he did. Mm -hmm. In fact, the John Fay house, the old house, is still in Westboro. And part of Westboro is now what they call Fayville. At one time, it was all Northboro or Marlboro or something else. Is that pretty close to Worcester? Oh, yeah. Right, right. Right. And because that I remember in one of the big tornadoes, the 52 tornado. A yeah, a lot Fayville. of it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, it, but Fayville was named after his name, this John Fay, mm -hmm. and he came here as an orphan on the Speedwell. Oh, Speedwell. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. On the old creaky Speedwell, <laughs> and he, um, as I say, they think his family came from France mm -hmm. uh, when they had the uh, the Huguenots. Right. They were right. persecution of the Huguenots. Right. Protestant. They yeah they fled to England yep. when Cromwell was around, right. and they think probably his father was killed in Cromwell's army, and they don't know what happened to his mother. But he came apparently with a religious group, probably the Quakers, mm -hmm. sort of adopted him because he was only eight years old, right. and. Uh, I don't know where he landed or how he went from there, but I, all I know is uh, that uh, he either built or bought a house or a lot of land up there in Westboro. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, 20 years or so ago, I stopped in Westboro to look up the family history in their historical society mm -hmm. and um, had a very interesting, uh, you know, uh, history of the whole town there and I have a book at home uh, telling the history of the Fay mm -hmm. family and uh, so that's where see my great my great grandmother her maiden name was Fay mm -hmm. and she uh, was born in Westboro mm -hmm. and then of course eventually she married a man by the name of Tolman who yeah, owns Tolman. who oh. owns a land down here in uh, West Newton see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, it was great that you have this long flight in eastern Massachusetts. Too. Oh yeah, right. Well, some of them settled in Maine, and then my father's family all went out west, and he came from the west. He was born in uh, in Tombstone, Arizona, and then he moved uh, as a young fellow, I guess, uh, with his family to uh, Ontario, California. He went to Pomona College, in, uh, in out that way. Pomona, yeah. Then he uh, came to Harvard and to become a lawyer. And I think at that point when he was at Harvard, that's when he probably met my mother mm -hmm. um, through somebody or other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. What class was he at Harvard? I couldn't. Oh, oh, no, the law school. Yeah. I couldn't tell you offhand. Probably, uh, who would be the 19... I was born in 1916. I don't know. Probably before 1912, mm -hmm. I would guess. Yeah, that's all of that. Yeah, I don't know. As I say, I've got it written test. down yeah. at home, but uh, um, I'm not sure. That's you know, interesting. Arizona, California. But as I say, uh, you know, uh, 
the book that I have at home was all written by my aunt. Oh, great, great. And she, it was when she was living in New Jersey, she used to go over to the New York Library to the genealogy uh -huh. department and spend days there <laughs> looking up all the family history. And it's, it's due to her well, that I have all this history of well, the lucky family. Because all the records are in this country. Yes. And it seems like it, it's, um, it's it's very interesting. It's all a matter of digging. Oh yeah, yeah. In 1916, yeah. when I was born, uh, and my mother died at the age, you know, when she when I was five weeks old, my grandmother and my aunt brought me back to West Newton and brought both me and my sister, yeah. who was 15 months older than I. But my father came east. Um, and eventually took my sister, who was probably four or five years old at that time, uh, back to Missouri, where I was born. And uh, but I stayed with my grandmother, and and she grew up in Missouri. Totally <laughs> you know, one horse down, Garden City, oh which is boy. outside of Kansas City, probably about an hour's drive outside of Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And it's I really was really western, oh, western Missouri. It's, yeah. it's a horror. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, and so when my sister uh, graduated from high school, um, we had kept in touch, and she had spent a couple of summers here with my aunt when she was like twelve or thirteen right. years old. She couldn't wait to get out of that small mm -hmm. town. And I don't think the town ever, <laughs> ever was anything but a small town, you know. And so she couldn't wait to get out of there. So she came east and got a job, lived with me, and, um, you know, when I, at that time, uh, which was just prior to World War uh, II. Two. And then she um, married uh, just after World War II started. And um, then, you know, from then on, she moved around different places, mm -hmm. had a couple of kids. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it's interesting what we're saying about Middle America. Some people can't wait to get out of it. You know? Boy, I tell you, she yeah, couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there was nothing there. You know, it, a little one-horse town, and I mean, I've been there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I went for my father's funeral. I went out there, and uh, they had one main street and about three buildings, yeah. telephone yeah. company, and a drugstore. And that was it. Yeah, yeah. And then all the side streets were dirt roads. It's not for me. And there well, was nothing there for her, really. Right, right. Well, for the luck of the draw, here you were in worldly great of Boston. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she loves Boston, but now she she lives down in Texas. Now she lives in San Antonio, mm -hmm. with her family down there. I mean, you know, she's got grown kids and yeah. grandchildren and that sort of thing. And uh, she doesn't like the cold weather, and I don't like the heat, so we don't cold get together weather. too often. I've been in San Antonio in January. They have things called the Blue Northerners. Oh, yeah, but not very often. Yeah, yeah, but still. It's but, like, and I never go down there. I go down there fairly frequently, but I never go down in the summer. Yeah, it's too hot well, for me. But I, January, you have respect for that weather. Yeah, yeah. They, it, things are different from when you were... A youngster. Yeah, I think the village concept um, uh, was stronger then, but maybe it's because everybody had in a village had the same sort of interests. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I think um, the Newton Corner um, building set up down here is a disaster. Mm -hmm. I think it's destroyed the village of New of Newton itself, Newton Corner. Um, when the library is moved over to the new library in you know over by city hall there what's in newton corner to attract anybody outside of the you know the hotels uh i never go on the over on uh, the other side of mm -hmm. the uh, uh rotary here yeah, I and i avoid it like the plague when i'm driving mm -hmm. and uh it, it uh, i think it's a shame i like the the tower hotel it's lovely mm -hmm. But the rest of the building blocks here on the other side of Washington Street there, I understand they're having a terrible time um, uh, renting. Right, right. I don't know what they're going to do with those buildings. They had high hopes when they went up. I just barely remember the movie theater and the complete block in late 82. 
do it. Yeah, all right. And uh, it seems like there was a lot there to attract people. Well, yes, they had, well, they had local stores. I don't know how they, financially, how well set up they were, but they had local stores. And uh, people could, no, I've got a friend that lives over off of Thornton Street there. And uh, where is she going to shop? Buy food. She has to, you know, it, it's really tough, and she has a hard time getting around. And uh, all your little nice stores, but maybe that's the way it is in other places, too. Well, but... Well, it's not much better in West Newton. <laughs> there are conglomerations still of stores. Though. Yeah, yeah, yes. But uh, all the groceries, big grocery stores, of right. course, have moved out. Right. Um, there used to be a big, uh, what was it, uh, First National there, and then there was Edwards uh, Five and Ten store there, and of course they just couldn't make it because they all moved out to the big malls and stuff. Well, and how long ago do you think they were dispersed? Oh, at least 15 or 20 years ago, I would say. So you have to go and you don't have that pleasure of walking? On a daily basis. Yeah, right. And I think it's going to be a shame if they, if they tear down the police station there. Which is which right, one? West Newton. Police station. It's located where? Right on Washington Street. Oh, no. Um, right next to the courthouse. It's a lovely looking building from the outside, but I understand it's a disaster inside. Um, I went, I've been in there a couple of times for other things, and uh, <laughs> you see buckets sitting around to catch the water when it rains. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And this has been going on for years. It isn't something that's just, now suddenly they don't have any money to fix a building. Why didn't they fix it when they had the money? Mm -hmm. Instead of letting it go to pot. And it's too bad because architecturally, I think both of those buildings are nice looking buildings. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a shame if they're going to tear them down and move them somewhere else. It doesn't make any sense to me. Why don't they fix the building? Mm -hmm. I think I know exactly what you mean. And that is nice architecture there. And then that's the which church? The nice well, church. yeah. Well, the Unitarian is you're going up. Right. Up towards Wellesley. Right. The courthouse, police station, and across the street is the big Unitarian church. Right. 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 And then there's a little park by Cherry Street there. Right, right. I, I and uh, you know, it's it's a nice it's a nice little area. But as I say, it's, it, the parking is difficult. Mm -hmm. If you if you want to stop there with a car, uh, even around back where they have municipal parking, yeah, in back the of the building, yeah, the ones, right. Yeah. Uh, it's it's difficult. Um, is handy for me because I can walk up. Right. right see, right. I, I live very close to the square. And it's the site of the last cinema in Newton. I, that's right. I know. I mean, <laughs> but they're doing a nice job fixing it up. Oh that's my it. goodness! Yeah, really, you can go see five or six movies at once. I I still think it's a blessing. You're not losing screens, but they're just centralized yeah. in all that one. Yeah, I was in there about three weeks ago. I don't usually go to the movies, but I was in there. My daughter but was up. you have the choice. Yeah, right. You have the choice. Absolutely. My daughter was up from New York, and she got kind of itchy, and she wanted to go into the movies. And uh, so we went to see some it's horrible really, Japanese thing. <laughs> well, but there's an, those are the amenities. Within my memory, I remember this one at the corner, and I remember the small one at the center. Yeah. Yes. And poof. I like that. Little, that was a little independent movie theater. How long was that there, the Newton Center one? Gee, I don't know. I'm not oh. terribly familiar with Newton oh. Center. To RSVP. Okay, you say it again. You work as I a work as a volunteer to RSVP. When I retired, probably about eight, nine years ago, I uh, wanted something, you know, interesting to do. And uh, I am an artist, so... Um, through RSVP, I went down to the to the center there at Newton Corner, which is uh, on Pearl and Jackson Road, mm -hmm. and it in the Lincoln Elliott School, mm -hmm. and um, I taught a class in calligraphy, and then I went from that 
so at this point now, I'm, the last eight years, I've been teaching a class uh, in uh, oil painting or watercolor, whatever anybody wants. And uh, it's unfortunate the room is small. We don't have enough space, and I think uh, it's going to be nice if they go through as the way they've sort of planned is to take the library which is going to be abandoned apparently in Newtonville and make it over into a senior center for everybody. Which is currently in the, in the basement now. That's Newtonville right, Newtonville. that's right. right. But there again, they're limited to one room pretty much. Right, right. And uh, it, it's a shame because uh, I was on a committee a couple of years ago when we were talking about the Warren. Uh, we had, I even saw the architect's plans and everything else for that he was going to, you know, build a senior center, it was going to be lovely. Yeah. What kind of a committee was that, a neighborhood committee? Uh, through, no, through the senior centers. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, coordinator at that time um, got several of us together, and we took a trip around um, to the outlying senior centers. There was Waltham, Lexington, Arlington, Winchester, and Needham Senior mm -hmm. Centers, and we took different days and visited them. Mm -hmm. And when we came back, we looked at the Senior Centers of Newton, and they're the pits. Mm -hmm. It was really terribly discouraging, and this is why we're looking forward to this uh, restructuring of the of the uh, Warren Junior High, mm -hmm. because a city of Newton that has some of the wealthiest people in the United States living in Newton. And they can't make a d building suitable for people who have been born, raised, and worked here all their lives. They give them, you know, two or three little rooms to work out of. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. It's really a shame. Mm -hmm. And as I say, um, uh, if now there's a lot of, or I say a lot, there are some people in Lincoln Elliott building there, who come to the senior center, who are of Italian ancestry, mm -hmm. who had brothers, sisters, fathers, and heavens knows what, in retail business down in Nonantum there. So if you want to get some real hot information... <laughs> oh, we've done Nonantum. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 and I forget other names, right? Right. 